one of the most hotly contested topics is whether it's a red card or whether it's a yellow card and when is it the one and when is it the other problem is sometimes uh, these decisions are just taken in the heat of the moment by a referee and not all of the factors are actually considered but there are a few clear uh, instances where it's just the one or it's just the other and those guidelines have been passed down from world rugby and i'd just like to touch on a couple of them uh, just for clarity overall a yellow card is an infringement that isn't as severe as the red card so in most instances i don't have too much of a problem if a referee just takes that decision and he issues the, the yellow card the red card however uh, should be considered in this uh, in the way that it has been considered thus far in the world cup where it isn't often a straight red it actually gets considered while the person is in the sin bin with a yellow card and then it can be reviewed thoroughly and a decision made on uh, on that it is however sometimes a little different uh, difficult just to know exactly why one card gets issued over the other so we'll just have a look at a couple of examples as to why the one happens versus another the yellow cards are the easier ones to adjudicate for the most part and uh, players get issued uh, a yellow card in one of the following situations more often than not the first one is when a professional foul is committed that is when there's a blatant uh, attempt by a player to stop progress uh, or to slow down the game when uh, the other team is surely going to score uh, at times like that that results in a yellow card as it should the second one is with repeated infringements if a team keeps a uh, uh, getting blown up for the same kind of uh, uh, problems and they do it again and again. The referee issues a warning and then whoever's the unlucky person after that to infringe in that same way again in a short period of time then gets a yellow card. The tackle situations or things like the tackle situations become a little bit more difficult to adjudicate. The first one that is a simple one is actually a high tackle. If a tackle starts high uh, with an arm around the neck, it's an instant yellow card. Just depending on the severity, it might be upgraded to a red card. However, if a player starts lower down and they slide up uh, as the tackle uh, happens, and then it goes around a person's neck, that often only results in a penalty, and mostly it doesn't result in a, in a yellow card. There are, however, some exceptions to this. When it comes to contact with the head, that's an instant yellow. Uh, it just depends on the intent from that the player who made contact with the other player's head whether or not it turns into a red card or not and but that mostly just depends on whether it's dangerous and the way that is adjudicated is sometimes a bit of a gray area the next one up often happens at rucks it's sometimes blown not blown as often as i think it should and that is a neck roll so if somebody is uh, is in a jackling position over the uh, over the ball carrier on the ground and uh, the next player comes in and they move the player off that ruck they're only allowed to move them off by uh, taking away their arms or uh, going in on their shoulders. Uh, but if they uh, grab them around the neck and then they twist them out of that rack, it is considered a neck roll and that's, an, that's one that can land you a yellow card. Then the last one in the tackle kind of situations is when you take a play in the air. Now taking a play in the air doesn't just need to be from a kick. It can also be from a line out if you pull down a player as they are jumping for the ball. So in both instances, if the player comes down safely, uh, you might get lucky and only get a penalty, but it should actually be a, a yellow guard that you receive for that. If the player doesn't come down safely and they land on their, uh, uh, their neck, neck or their head, it should be a red card. In many instances, the red cards are just the stricter application of that exact same law. And it just depends on if there was malicious intent in most instances and the seriousness of the incident. Blatant incidents of foul play should get a red card every single time. If a punch is thrown or there's reckless contact with the opposing player's head, should be a red card every single time. Like I mentioned earlier, if a player is taken uh, in the air and they're not brought down safely, should be an instant red card. That is usually applied uh, when it comes to kicks, but I think it should be applied a lot more when it happens in lineouts as well, because it can be just as dangerous. Now, the obvious one and the easiest of the lot is when a player receives two yellow cards in a game. And that's an instant red card as well. The others are slight grey areas and it's a little bit more difficult to adjudicate. And 
this usually happens in the tackle tackle uh, situations and the match, match officials uh, try to judge the intent and the severity of the situation and they see whether or not there were mitigating circumstances the very clear ones are when you have incidents like Owen Farrell not using his arms in the tackle tackling him with an upward motion hitting a person with his shoulder on their uh, in the in their face there's no doubt about it that should be a, an instant red every single time players should not be allowed to play like that the more difficult ones and the ones that uh, are usually difficult to judge and sometimes lead to an unfortunate result is uh, exactly what happened with Curry. Uh, if you have a look at the situation, yes, there was a, a head on head uh, contact and that usually goes in favor of the attacking player. Uh, but in this instance, it was literally the player jumped for the ball as they came down. Uh, the two heads clashed and Curry was the unfortunate one not to have any mitigating circumstances. Uh, helping him out of that situation. I thought the person coming down from the kick would be a mitigating circumstance, but clearly that isn't how it was interpreted. So I think unfortunate in that situation, but in other situations, players should know to go lower in a tackle and not get themselves in those difficult situations where they can be on the wrong end of the law. Very true, there are still going to be some of these situations that pop up with a lot of debate in the World Cup. And we can't get around that. It's going to happen. We just have to live with it. But I know that the officials are working hard at making sure that they make the right decisions uh, and they keep it fair throughout. So overall, an interesting couple of games on, on their way. And I hope that for the most part, uh, any red cards or yellow cards that get issued don't have a negative impact on the game where there was a bit of an error in judgment.